Sakurai, not a normal me costume. At least give Gino a deluxe me. Not the same one we got in Smash 4, no. No. Oh. 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 Oh, it was all just a horrible nightmare. Oh. Oh, thank goodness. I knew Sakurai wouldn't abandon the fan base like that. He knows how much we want Gino and Smash. Oh, time to check my Switch. Damn it, it wasn't a dream! Ugh. Ugh, how long have I been out? Whew. Whew. Time for me to go catch up on Smash speculation. Hey everybody, so I took a short break there after the Gino Me costume deconfirmed my most wanted character. Gino, but it's a brand new year, and it's time to get back to speculating Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. There's a lot to cover since I last talked Smash speculation, so I'm going to split this up into two separate videos. The first one will be focused on specifically speculation, since the Mr. Sakurai Presents Sephiroth video. And the second part, which I'll post in a day or so, will focus on the most recent potential leaks we have floating around right now, as I want to give both attention and not bury the leak discussion in an extremely long video. Alright, so we have three more characters left in this second Fighter's Pass, and while my most wanted character appears to be out of the running, there are still plenty of fighters I'd be extremely hyped to see make it into Smash before this is all said and done. Now, for anyone out there still hopeful Gino will somehow become a playable fighter in Smash Ultimate, I will go over the slim possibility of that here. However, just know I'm no longer personally counting on it happening myself. I think the Mii costume is sadly the end of the road for Gino. Now, before I get into talking about the Gino Mii costume aftermath and all that stuff, I want to address a couple recent things at the start here. As I know people don't always watch these videos till the end, and I figure the latest stuff that's happened is worth getting out there. First off, there's a rumor of a possible Nintendo Direct, or some kind of Direct anyway, happening at some point in the near future here. This is coming from over on Reddit. This was posted by Rod Haroli, and it says the Nintendo Direct Archive website has been updated. Grain of salt. I remember that some people used Vizio Spark to see the last update on Nintendo Direct Archive website. One day someone checked on September, and a few days after this we had a brand new Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase. And then on October someone checked again, the last update, and happened the same thing, a new Direct Mini Partner Showcase. Then today I decided to check the last update on this site, and well, the last update was made today too. This may indicate a new Nintendo Direct or simply nothing, take it with a grain of salt. And here is an image of the update itself from that site. So potentially a Nintendo Direct of some kind could be happening soon, but exactly when is anyone's guess. Not really all that surprising something like that could be happening during this time frame at the beginning of the year. Nintendo will likely want to lay out its plans for 2021 soon. Next up, in recent stuff that's happened, Nintendo is buying Next Level Games, a Canadian company that has made many great games for Nintendo for a long time now, including one of my personal favorites, Punch-Out for the Wii. Cool to see Nintendo acquiring a Western company, hopefully that means more great Nintendo games in the future from the people over at Next Level Games. And finally, as far as recent stuff goes, I want to point out our latest spirit event. It's Age of Calamity themed and actually has a young Impa spirit. Likely this knocks Impa out of the running as a potential playable character. Though I still think a Breath of the Wild 2 Zelda as a rep for Breath of the Wild 2 itself could happen if playable Zelda is a big selling point for Breath of the Wild 2 and the game headlines Nintendo's E3 2021 or something. I could still see that happening. This spirit event is numbered 1071 and was actually skipped over, so that's kind of interesting. And also this is a Koei Tecmo game and the copyright actually says Koei Tecmo. This is the first time we've gotten a Koei Tecmo spirit since base game. I'll talk a bit more about what it could mean Koei Tecmo getting a spirit event this far into Smash a bit later in this video. Anyway, it's pretty cool to see that Impa has a Sheik spirit battle associated with her, as I always thought Impa would make a really good echo for Sheik. Actually, speaking of Sheik-based spirit battles, that's a pretty good segue into talking about this Gino Me costume situation, and all the stuff we've seen during the Mr. Sakurai Presents Sephiroth, and what's been going on since then. The biggest thing as far as speculation goes that we learned from that presentation has been the Gino Me costume, in my opinion. Which, while an updated version, was essentially the same style Me costume from Smash 4 that we got way back in 2015. I don't want to spend too much of this video giving my thoughts on how I personally feel about this being the end for Gino and Smash Ultimate, as there's a lot of stuff I want to cover in this video, and I'd rather people hear the Smash speculation info over my own opinion on a character I personally wanted getting deconfirmed. But there is 
is certainly, obviously, some disappointment with getting essentially the same Geno representation we got five years ago back during Smash 4. Especially after waiting two years since Smash Ultimate's base game just to see this same style costume return. The Geno Mii costume got a lot of attention online when it showed up and essentially deconfirmed Geno. Honestly, this was the big news coming out of the Mr. Sakurai Presents Sephiroth video. Once again, so much attention for the costume happening at all proves the push for Geno to get into Smash has a shockingly large following. I am grateful Geno is in Smash at all, and considering he's an obscure character from a single mid-90s video game, it's pretty amazing his Smash popularity is as widely known as it is. It's a huge testament to the Geno fan base that we've come this far. However, even still, that said, it's certainly hard for Geno fans not to be a bit disappointed here. When updating the costume with a mask-style head, like we've seen with other characters, would have likely been relatively low effort from the Smash team. Doing a fan-termed deluxe-style me instead of what we got would have went a long way to satisfying this fanbase. I think most Geno fans were completely willing to meet halfway here, and a deluxe me would have been met with the same kind of enthusiasm the Sans me costume was met with. Instead, I feel most people take these non-deluxe me costume reveals more like simply being told your character is deconfirmed, and less like a meet us halfway consolation prize that your character almost made it and is sort of playable in the game. I really feel the only way your character is sort of playable is with the deluxe me's. These me's look more like a me fighter just cosplaying as the character, and not as the character themselves getting in Smash. I do hope Sakurai and the Smash team take note of the huge difference in reactions from fans to the deluxe me costumes with masks as opposed to these ones that look like a me cosplaying a character, and take that into account in the future when they represent characters. If possible, do the deluxe me. I, and seemingly many others, had been hopeful after Sephiroth's reveal that Gino would be a prime candidate for the next fan-dubbed, deluxe-style Mii costume. His body type fits that style Mii perfectly. And Sakurai had given his costume a splash screen back in Smash 4 when we first saw it in 2015, and talked directly about Geno showing up in Smash when that costume was revealed. Seemingly back then, Sakurai was acknowledging that Geno had a large fan base, and the Mii costume felt like Sakurai was trying his best to give us some form of playable Geno through that Mii costume. However, now with characters like Sans and Bomberman getting the deluxe me treatment, which allows a player to have something that at least visually looks as though the character is playable in Smash, it seemed with Geno having such a large Smash fanbase, but relative obscurity outside of the hardcore fans, it would fit very well to have this level of representation for him in Ultimate. Sadly, this is what we got again, and this time Sakurai didn't even acknowledge it in the presentation. The Miis were revealed first, which was not typical of these presentations, but it seemed it was just so that the Final Fantasy VII Miis could be used while showing off Sephiroth's moveset. Geno's Mii costume reveal did have some clever references to Super Mario RPG, however, so that was kind of cool to see. And while Sakurai didn't actually say anything about the Geno Mii costume in the presentation, he did take the time to highlight Geno a bit afterwards in a pick of the day image, doing this sort of throwback to the Kulix battle from Super Mario RPG. So that was cool to see. Speaking of the pick of the day images, Sakurai wrote, Originally under development, it was posted once a day as a service to the staff. However, I don't update it on holidays, and I can't post all the photos under development on Twitter, so the stock has decreased. That said, I still have more than 100, but I'll try to slow down the pace just in case. I hope you will continue to do so. He went on to say, It's been one year since I started today's One Piece today. It's updated every day, so it's over 365. Here, I am thinking of updating it five times a week from the end of next year's holidays. So it seems Sakurai is going to slow down on the frequency of posting these pick of the day images throughout 2021. Also, while we're talking about this particular pick of the day featuring Sephiroth's final smash and the characters facing forwards towards it, over on Discord, Siderdic wrote, So about character glitches. There was a glitch a while back where you could get characters to face the front of the screen, towards you. Could this possibly be from Sephiroth's final smash? I believe there was also a glitch a while back with Daisy and her dress being smaller. Possibly also for Sephiroth? I wrote back, don't know if Sephiroth was the Daisy glitch. I think it was Steve, because Daisy picks vegetables and Steve mines the stage. The Sephiroth facing front final smash glitch, if there was one, likely was caused by his final smash, though. I don't recall that particular glitch, but I do believe if it did exist, then it probably was due to Sephiroth's final smash having the characters turn like that. 
So like I said before, it's unfortunate Gino didn't get a mask-style head and join the ranks of the other fan-dubbed Deluxe Me costumes. There are a few possibilities for why Gino did not get this treatment. Perhaps Sakurai simply doesn't care as much about Gino as we thought. Maybe the Gino fanbase has blown out of proportion the fact that Sakurai has said in the past he wanted Gino playable. Maybe he didn't really care all that much. Or maybe Square, or even more likely Nintendo, doesn't want Gino to get a lot of acknowledgement, as they have no plans to use him in the future and fear highlighting him a lot in Smash would increase fan demand for the character to be used more in the future for other games, and they have no plans on doing that or trying to negotiate for that. Or, in my opinion, the most likely reason, it's probably something legal involving the ability to use and update the Smash 4 Me costumes. I'm guessing that's what the issue was here. Perhaps Square and the Geno copyright were difficult to negotiate for anything more than what was already gotten, being able to reuse the same Me costume from Smash 4 or something. Actually, none of the Smash 4 third-party Mii costumes have been changed in any significant way, beyond simply being polished up from Smash 4 to Ultimate, which is what happened with the Geno Mii costume. So potentially there is some kind of legal thing here involving the ability to reuse the Mii costume from Smash 4, but not any kind of real update or change that would make it a new Mii costume of the character. Maybe they're supposed to legally sell the Smash 4 one again. Or it might be some combination of all three. Maybe Nintendo didn't really want the character pushed. Maybe Sakurai wasn't really pushing for Geno as hard as we maybe thought he was. And maybe Square had some legal issues with Geno. So I don't know. I could feel like all three of those things might be in play here. Who knows for sure what went on here, though. Sakurai did point out getting the copyright for music from Square was difficult, for Final Fantasy music anyway, and while Beware the Forest Mushrooms did play when Geno's costume was revealed, the track is not coming to Smash with the me. Many songs play when Mii costumes are revealed that sadly don't end up actually coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. They're just in the reveal trailers for those Mii's. Of course, several of the deluxe Mii's did bring in music tracks, like Sans and Cuphead. Potentially trying to get a track for Geno proved too difficult, and the idea of making him a deluxe at all might have been scrapped because Sakurai couldn't get a track for him. If it was ever even considered to make him a deluxe, of course. Also, once again, all the Mii costumes we got with Sephiroth were Square Enix Mii's. This happened before with Hero. I still do believe the Chocobo and Geno Mii were likely going to show up with Hero initially, but were held off for Sephiroth in the second pass. Once again, it's sad to see the Geno Mii held off for so long, only to not get it upgraded significantly. I personally probably would have preferred to have that band-aid ripped off back when we got Hero, and not wait all this time to find out Geno's deconfirmed. The modding community, however, has picked up some of the slack the Smash Ultimate team left us here, and given us a pretty great deluxe Geno mask head. Sean Hicks Art over on Twitter wrote, The Geno Deluxe Me Costume Super Smash Bros. Ultimate mod is now available for download. I hope you all enjoy, and may this new year bring us closer to a revival of Super Mario RPG. This costume looks amazing, and while I'm not usually one to mod games, this is very, very tempting for me, as it's the Geno Mii costume I would have been completely satisfied with. Though still, once again, it's sad to see this isn't what Geno looks like officially in Smash Ultimate, as this is absolutely perfect. I would have been totally happy with this. See, when the Mii costumes get this kind of treatment, they don't really look like costumes at all, they look like the character in Smash. I much prefer this. Shout out to all the people who helped make this mod. Excellent job, guys. There is one plus side to getting the Smash 4 Geno Mii costume back instead of a Deluxe Mask style Mii costume, and that is that we get the Geno hat to play around with. Lots of people have informed me that they've made a Papa Geno's Mii Fighter using the Geno hat, so it does allow for doing things like that. So many people have sent me their Mii's that they made of me. I'm not going to show any of them here because I fear I'd forget someone who sent me some, but everyone who sent me a Papa Gino's Mii Fighter, they made me look awesome. I'm really grateful for everyone who went and did that. Thanks for showing me those. They're really cool. I made one myself. There was also something pretty interesting with the Super Mario RPG logo they used when the Geno Mii was revealed. The European version looked like this. I'm unsure if this is what it looked like on the European eShop release of Mario RPG, but it's very interesting the title of the game was altered in different versions of the Mr. Sakurai Presents Sephiroth video. Actually, the whole Sephiroth presentation video was a little odd, as it took a while for the North American version to show up on YouTube, and when it did show up, it ended up being age-restricted. Not exactly sure why it was age-restricted, but I suspect the ESRB was striking once again here, much the same way they have been for all the M-Theory stuff. 
One very cool thing that happened as a result of the Gino Mii costume was some original concept artwork of Gino was shown off over on Twitter. It seems that it is getting excited, so please take a look at some of the ideas. It's very cool as a fan of Super Mario RPG and Geno to see these after so many years. I can tell a lot of the early design ideas we can see here seem to have been transferred to other characters, various characters in Super Mario RPG, probably throughout the design process. It's just really cool to see what Geno might have looked like instead of what we got, though I vastly prefer his final design myself personally. Okay, so before I move on from talking about Gino and the Gino Mii costume, I do want to go over the very slim possibility of Gino somehow still becoming a playable fighter in Smash Ultimate. Now, I do not personally think this will be the case. However, dismissing the possibility entirely would be a bit foolish for a game that has surprised me so many times before. I will say if a third fighter pass happened, and it was not already planned or something. Maybe Sakurai takes a break after the second pass, and maybe they even do another smash ballot or something before deciding on a third pass. Something like that. Then everything is back on the table, and of course in a scenario like that, Gino would once again be back in the running. However, barring a complete reset third fighter pass scenario, I do not personally think it's all that likely Gino will happen for this second fighter's pass. But there are theories, so let's discuss them. Over on Twitter, at Gino Boost pointed out this interesting anomaly. So to add on to my tinfoil theory about the Gino Mii costume, Gino's fight is still Sheik and not the costume. Just like how Min Min's fight is still Corrin instead of the fighter. But then Cuphead's costume shows up for his fight? Little sus, not gonna lie. And I have purchased the Gino Mii costume already, so I know it's not because of that. There may be hope yet, bros. It is rather odd the Geno Spirit Battle doesn't update to fighting the Geno Mii costume. Several have updated, and yet, similar to Sakurai's completely ignoring mentioning the Geno Mii costume in the presentation, once again, the Geno Mii costume gets sort of passed over here. It doesn't even update the Geno Spirit Battle. It is odd, I will say, for a character with so much fan demand to get such little attention if the Mii costume is his final fate in Smash Ultimate. This lack of attention from Sakurai and in Smash Ultimate itself for Gino, despite the fan demand, has led a lot of people to message me with theories about Gino being the secret final character in the game, and the Mii costume is just a big fake-out to trick us. The general idea most people seem to have is that the Mii costume will be part of Gino's reveal as the final fighter for Smash Ultimate. His spirit will come down and inhabit or possess the Gino Mii, as that's what Gino does. He possesses a doll in the game, so he'd possess the costume, and he will come to life as a playable fighter. If we had gotten Sephiroth without the Gino Mii, it would be a little suspicious, so they've given us an unupgraded Smash 4 Gino Mii costume to fake us out and really surprise us at the end when Gino shows up as a playable fighter. When we first had Fighter Pass 2 shown to us, the 11th fighter appeared as sort of a bonus to the pass, so maybe the final fighter really is something special Sakurai acquired for the fans. Of course, it's just as likely they pointed out the final fighter in the second pass, simply because it was a way to show that this pass had one more character than the first pass did. But if these theories are somehow correct and Sakurai did go out of his way to get Geno in Smash as the final character, that would be amazing. Obviously, I would absolutely love for that to happen. However, I really think holding out hope after getting what I'd take as a solid deconfirmation for just about any other fighter would be foolish and hypocritical here. If there is some master conspiracy plan to fake us out and surprise us with Gino at the end, so be it. I'll just be truly surprised if that happens. But for now, I think it's probably a better idea to dismiss such out there conspiracy theories and accept Gino is likely just this me costume. I have shot down similar theories before for other characters. Such as Travis Touchdown, when he got his Mii costume, people were saying maybe Travis Touchdown will show up and break the fourth wall and talk about getting that Mii costume. Personally, I don't think Nintendo would sell us a Mii fighter to then sell us a playable fighter of the same character later on. It feels like a somewhat scummy business practice, and it's the sort of thing Sakurai usually tries desperately to avoid. Sakurai seems wary of even selling us the fighter passes as a blind purchase, so I can't really see him selling us a fake me costume of a character he plans on selling us as a real character later on and just double dipping with sales. It's very scummy. Sakurai aside, however, people can think what they want about Square Enix and how they might want to double dip on a character's sales, or that Sakurai does like to troll and fake out and trick the community and the fans sometimes, like he did with 
Banjo's reveal or K. Rool's reveal, but still, I think it's a far shot to think that that's what's happening here. We also got a star-themed spirit event recently, and that would have been perfect for Geno. So I feel they might have saved such an event until after Geno was revealed as a playable fighter, if that's really what they were planning here. But they didn't. They gave us the star event. So unless there's some unforeseeable major leak that's just simply undeniable that happens in the future, or we get a third fighter's pass, I generally won't be speculating Geno, not for the second fighter's pass anymore. He is sadly, in my opinion, out of the running. But again, I'd love to be wrong about that, and if we get surprised and he's the secret final fighter, awesome. But I'm going to try to keep my own personal speculation away from such conspiracy theories about Gino, simply because I'd rather accept him as just the me costume if that's all we get. I do still want to make a Gino moveset video at some point here. I have had a moveset and a whole playstyle in my head for how I'd like to see Gino in Smash, but I was sort of saving doing that video in case there was some sort of gap between like Gino being revealed to be the next character and a Sakurai Presents Gino. If there was like a few days in between something like that happening, that's when I was going to do my Gino moveset video. But now that Gino is just a me costume, I'll try and get my own Gino moveset video done at some point here and explain how I would have repped Gino in Smash. His attacks, his taunts, his stage, spirits, all that, everything. So hopefully I'll get around to that video at some point here soon. It's just going to be for fun. Anyway, my apologies for spending so much of this video on the Gino Mii costume and not the playable fighter the presentation was about, Sephiroth. But let's talk about some interesting things going on with Sephiroth himself since that presentation. We got a Shadows-themed spirit event to coincide with Sephiroth's inclusion in Smash, and we learned Sephiroth's codename in Smash's internal data was Edge, Kind of funny for the king of edgy gaming characters. They also did something kind of cool with Sephiroth where he was available early if you defeated him in this special mode they added. So adding modes to the game, even temporary ones, is still a possibility, which is pretty cool. I wonder what we'll get going forward. Sephiroth's classic mode Sakurai referred to as sort of a boss rush mode as Sephiroth's classic mode is just fighting against all the Smash bosses. So, yeah, it's kind of a boss rush mode. Of course, since it's just Sephiroth's classic mode, you have to play as Sephiroth for this. So you can't choose who you want to play, so it's not as good as a boss rush mode. I don't want to sound too ungrateful or come off too entitled here, especially after talking so much about the Gino Mii costume we got and how it's not a deluxe Mii costume, but um, Smash usually blows my expectations away. And I can't help but point out, once again, another missed opportunity here that likely would have made a huge difference for the fans and probably would have been pretty easy to implement. So they made this special mode just to unlock Sephiroth early. And they made a sort of boss rush mode in Sephiroth's classic mode. Why not combine the two and just give us a boss rush mode that unlocks Sephiroth? Have us pick any fighter to fight every boss in the game, and have Sephiroth be at the end of that. Beating this would unlock Sephiroth early, and the mode isn't temporary. It could just be a boss rush mode added to the game. This missed opportunity feels so similar to the Gino Mii costume being given just a mask update. Seemingly minor effort to slightly change what we got would have went a long way to pleasing the fans here, I feel. I can't help but lament a bit over how much more positive I think the whole fan reaction here could have been if they had given us a deluxe style Gino Me and Boss Rush mode that unlocks Sephiroth and actually add Boss Rush to the game. Neither of which feel all that out of reach compared to what we actually were given. Smash Ultimate usually blows me away and usually makes the right decisions. And basically I think this Mr. Sakurai Presents Sephiroth presentation had the potential to be one of those great moments in Smash Ultimate. Not just for the character, Sephiroth's great, but for the other things we got. They could have given us a Geno Deluxe Me, they could have given us Boss Rush Mode, and those two things I think would have made people really, really happy. Instead, it was sort of all just pretty standard fare, but we were really close to those two things, so I don't know, it just it's a little disappointing. Oh well, can't win them all, I guess. Over on Discord, Ben the Demon wrote me, Yo Papa, I have a tinfoil hat theory about Sephiroth. I was playing with training mode to get some picks with Alucard and Sephiroth as they look nearly identical. I noticed that Alucard and Sephiroth have the exact same run speed and a near identical running animation. And Alucard's vampire bat tackle he uses functions just like Octoslash, but always straight horizontally. Sakurai has mentioned on record that he considered Alucard for a playable slot before deciding on Simon. Could Sephiroth have been built upon the work they did on Alucard? So that's pretty interesting. Sakurai has said he almost went with Alucard over the Belmonts for our Castlevania rep. So maybe some early Alucard stuff was used to make Sephiroth. 
Mima wrote me, this probably means nothing, but the Nintendo official Instagram account posted this. Then like 15 minutes later, changed it. Like deleted the post and reposted it. Maybe Sephiroth was initially first in the Fighter's Pass. Maybe a typo? I don't know. So Nintendo's Instagram also posted these images, which have Sephiroth listed as Challenger Pack 6, and then minutes later changed it to say Challenger Pack 8. Potentially, Sephiroth was initially supposed to be Challenger Pack 6. It might explain why we got those Square Spirit events around the time of Challenger Pack 6. Maybe that was what was going to lead off this Fighter's Pass, Sephiroth. Speaking of spirit events, we were correct in assuming those square spirit events meant a square character would happen again during the second Fighter's Pass. We just ended up getting Sephiroth over Sora or Gino, who, was, who I was speculating. It's worth noting that Arc System Works also had a spirit event for River City Ransom. Arc System Works does not have a playable fighter in Smash. Yet. Most people assume if they got one, it would probably be Soul Bad Guy, who would be pretty cool to get in my opinion. Actually, it might be worth noting the companies that don't have playable fighters, but do have content in Smash. Arc System Works, Koei Tecmo, Ubisoft, and Bethesda. That's four companies, and of course we only have three spots left. And I doubt all three spots will be from companies that have yet to have a playable fighter. But still, it's worth keeping an eye on these companies, I'd say. Characters like Rayman, Doomguy, or Hayabusa have been talked about a lot and could still show up. Also, this most recent Age of Calamity Spirit event is a Koei Tecmo Spirit event, the first one since the game's release, so Koei Tecmo may very well be on board for Pass 2, similar to what happened with those Square Spirit events. Is Hayabusa finally going to happen? Speaking of Hayabusa, Yusha on Discord wrote me, Just speculation, but Darkon is very similar to the main villain, Jaquo, Jaquo, Jaquio, I don't know, from the first Ninja Gaiden game. Nothing major, but just thought it was funny. They could definitely reveal Ryu slashing the eye in the center as a follow-up to the Hero trailer. So that connection could make a pretty cool tie-in reveal trailer for Hayabusa somehow. Sephiroth being a villain character has done to speculation what usually happens whenever we get a new fighter. Everyone starts speculating similar characters. Min Min had everyone speculating first-party fighters. Steve increased the talk of Microsoft reps and big, iconic gaming characters, as well as having us all look at popular, modern games like Fortnite. And now I see Sephiroth increasing the speculation talk for already repped third-party series to get another fighter, and for more villain characters. One potential character that ticks both of those boxes is Dr. Robotnik, or Eggman, from the Sonic series. I would absolutely love to get Dr. Robotnik in Smash. The Sonic series definitely deserves a second rep, and if we could get a completely unique rep from an existing third-party franchise, Robotnik would be a top-tier choice in my opinion. Has anyone else noticed on the Smash website, Sonic is actually called Sonic the Hedgehog on his character page? I don't know any other character that gets their full title like that, but doesn't actually have it in the game. It's kind of odd. Anyway, Sephiroth being from an existing franchise in Smash already brought in a lot of Final Fantasy VII representation, which was sorely needed, as the base game representation for Final Fantasy VII was dismal at best. Surprisingly, this even updated Cloud quite a bit. The Advent Children Cloud alt costumes got a unique new Final Smash, Omni Slash version 5, and the original Final Fantasy VII artwork for Cloud was added in as one of Cloud's spirits. Interesting that already existing characters can get major updates like this, even brand new Final Smashes. I don't think anyone expected that to be the case. Also, Cloud now has a separate Advent Children Cloud voice. We were speculating about voice theory before, that at least one more fighter would have an additional voice, and surprisingly, it might have been for this edition of Advent Children Cloud. Once again, Smash is very unexpected sometimes. I think we were all thinking something more along the lines of Crash and Coco, or like a male and female monster Hunter, but it looks like it might have been for Cloud. Sakurai actually mentioned Monster Hunter a bit here. Mr. Fahrenheit wrote me, Tinfoil hat time, in the Steve presentation, Sakurai made a reference and specifically called out Final Fantasy. Now with Sephiroth, we see Sakurai making references to Monster Hunter while fighting Rathalos. Coincidence? Probably. But it's just something interesting to me. Mentioning Monster Hunter while fighting Rathalos is less out of the blue than mentioning Final Fantasy during Steve's presentation, but still, it's a bit interesting. Considering how much Monster Hunter stuff is headed to Switch in the near future, yeah, it's possible a Monster Hunter rep could be coming. 
Inran Khan actually had some really interesting insight he shared about some of the Smash characters that could relate to Monster Hunter. Inran wrote, From what I know, but honestly maybe all my info is bullshit, who knows, don't trust me, Sephiroth is cheaper than he usually is as a recommendation from Square Enix, but not because of Hero. Byleth has a decent bit of the moveset of a character that didn't make it due to negotiations falling through. But Byleth was supposed to be in the main roster, and were moved to DLC well before the game came out. They weren't a late replacement. Min Min was indeed partly because it's easier to get Nintendo characters. My understanding of the timing was, Plant and Byleth were planned for base roster, Plant was much more finished than Byleth, which was basically a model and some ideas, the Three Houses delay let Nintendo put Byleth on their list of DLC characters for Smash, Plant was the transitional DLC character. They got put on the back burner for Fighter Pass 1. They then said, yes, it's not like frame data and animations were used. It was, we had these ideas, maybe we could adapt them. A lot of DLC characters have reused or unused ideas in their moveset. And they also said, I don't know if Monster Hunter is dead for the record. I don't think they're getting in the game, but I don't know. So obviously take all that with a grain of salt, but many of us had already made the connection that Byleth's moveset could have worked really well for a Monster Hunter character. So perhaps Monster Hunter was going to get a playable fighter at some developmental planning point in Smash Ultimate, and Rathalos was chosen instead. Obviously highly speculative, and Monster Hunter could still get a rep, but if we had to guess which character that almost made it in became the source for ideas for Byleth's moveset, Monster Hunter would certainly fit the bill extremely well. This also sort of harkens back to that whole Alucard Sephiroth thing I was talking about earlier. Maybe characters that almost made it in are getting some of their ideas put into future DLC characters. It just seems like the sort of thing that would likely happen when developing a game. The Monster Hunter Me costumes from Smash 4 are among the now extremely small pool of missing third party Smash 4 Me costumes to not yet return to Smash Ultimate. Monster Hunter and the Lloyd Me costume are all that remains absent from Ultimate. I'll talk more specifically about Lloyd in the second part of this video, focused more on the leaks and things going on. Lloyd is my most wanted Namco rep, so he's one of the characters I'd personally love to see make it in as one of the final three spots, especially now that Geno is deconfirmed with this Me costume. Of course, maybe Lloyd will simply have his Smash 4 Me costume return as well. We'll have to wait and see. Alright, well I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My apologies for having a bit of an absence from Smash speculation there. And if you guys have any thoughts or comments about any of the stuff I talked about in this video, leave them below, and I'll try to get the next leak-focused video out as soon as possible. So once again, thank you guys for all the subscribes, all the likes, uh, really helps out the channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do so, or like the video, or leave a comment, whatever you want. Uh, until next time, have a good one.